our top stories this week. A new study from the University of Washington finds that child maltreatment is not a clear path to adult crime as other factors such as being in foster care are what make criminal activity more likely. In California, the Attorney General links the state's troubled foster care system to human trafficking. In Florida, the Broward County Sheriff's Office has to pay back $300,000 in misspent child protection funds. And in Washington, time is running out for everybody in the homes of foster care providers to get vaccinated for the flu or give up the kids. A new report from the Children's Advocacy Institute entitled Shame on U.S. is claiming that Massachusetts, as well as 49 other states, are failing to meet minimum federal standards in regards to keeping children safe from abuse and neglect. In New Zealand, there has been a rise in the number of formal complaints against social workers. South Carolina doesn't have enough foster homes for all the kids they've been snatching these days. And in Australia, a foster kid is more likely to be abused in care than adopted. In California, lawmakers say that they're going to tackle excessive prescribing of psych meds to foster kids. In Arizona, five former CPS agent scapegoats are suing the child protective industry for wrongful termination. In Florida, a judge slams the child protective industry because children are not getting the proper care and protection they need. And in Maine, the Supreme Court rules that medical marijuana could potentially make a parent unfit when the drug impairs the parent's ability to care for children. In Kansas, a foster father who left a little baby in a hot car to die while he smoked pot and watched Game of Thrones cries like a bitch while being sentenced to 32 months in prison for murder. And in Texas, the child protective industry placed a 14-month-old in a home where he was intentionally drowned. In Florida, young girls who are living in a group home are being targeted for sexual assault in an area known for drug activity. In California, a pediatric nurse and foster parent pleads guilty to sexually exploiting a two-month-old premature male foster child in an 11-month-old female patient who'd been placed in his care. A California CPS agent has more charges slapped on him for molesting a third minor. And in North Carolina, a foster parent gets eight years and four months in jail for molesting foster kids. In Oregon, the child protective industry is being sued for $950,000 after a 32-year-old foster dad had sex with a 15-year-old girl. And in Delaware, a CPS agent was charged with sexual extortion after threatening to take a mother's kids away unless she had sex with him. In Lebanon, an illegal adoption agency is being charged with child trafficking after getting caught pressuring migrant workers to give up their children in exchange for a way home. In England, members of Parliament are calling for an investigation into claims that British social workers are wrongfully snatching kids from their parents. British police apologized to a father for an inaccurate report that led to a visit from social services. And in Australia, a couple of foster parents who were caught running a sex shop and leaving the kid locked up in his bedroom at night still have foster kids. In North Carolina, a former director of an international adoption agency stands accused of making false statements in order to keep the agency open. In Georgia, the CPS boss fires a CPS agent one day after a news station airs an investigation into her criminal record. And finally tonight, in Texas, a school district is under fire for forcing nearly two dozen kids to pull down their pants for an underwear inspection after poop was found on the gymnasium floor. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.